the artificial intelligence is inspired mostly by biological real intelligence. American president uh, announced $500 billion AI project. We are a country of 1.4 billion population. And we don't have our Bharat ImageNet. Why can't we do it? There are so many tools have come, whether it is chat GPT, you know, uh, the video translation tools, query tools, you know, hundreds of AI tools are on the market now. At best, they can help you, assist you, but they, they cannot make you what you would like to become. Well, so good morning, everyone. And uh, we are really thankful to Hindustan Times for organizing this event over here and thankful to our director, uh, sparing his time uh, out of his busy schedule. And uh, as we all know that AIML got, you know, huge amount of boom and everything is happening in this area of AIML. And uh, that this, this is going to be a free-flowing interview in which probably certain question that we are going to ask and then it is going to be an interactive session in which our students can also talk about and discuss their, their queries. So starting with this and several of you may be aware, some of you may not be aware because they are very in depth. Uh, <laughs> so actually Isar has started his career in 1988 when he was his, uh, started his M-Tech research in AIML. And at that point of time, nobody was working in this area. It was completely new. So much amount of uncertainty in this domain. And so recently, last 10 years, 2012, we started to have a big boom of deep learning after Alex Net and also how can you see this, uh, you know, uh, area now growing and what are your thoughts about this? Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. Yes, we started uh, working on AI in the time when probably people didn't know what is AI. <laughs> and uh, we went in to do our uh, PhD and, and it is really a pleasant uh, moment for me that we started reading about Hinter, his back propagation algorithm, Hopfield network, the associative memory, we started teaching them and uh, last year, 2024, they got Nobel Prize. It was uh, unthinkable those days. If you look at uh, my journey with AI is essentially how can we build a conscious machine? The main purpose is do we understand our inner cognitive processes by which we are aware of the environment around us? We understand the environment. We take a decision based on certain cognitive processes, which are still a mystery for us. But as we look at currently the AI boom, and everybody is talking uh, about it, uh, American president uh, announced $500 billion AI project. But I'm just coming from Boston, and there is a sense of uh, uh, negativity because of the deep seek that has come from China which is even more disruptive because the cost at which it has come, because it is so cheap. Okay. And Americans cannot actually even dream that you can have, you can provide AI products with such cheap price. But uh, what, is, what is that we should look at? Or from what perspective we should look at the AI now? I still believe artificial intelligence is the reflection of human intelligence. Our contemplation on real intelligence gets mapped into artificial intelligence. So those who are 
academically creati creative they will always be immerse immersive in this particular field because it's very challenging what is real intelligence we don't know and uh, although the artificial intelligence is inspired mostly by biological real intelligence we have a long way to go in spite of the boom in spite of many ai winters the world has seen over last 4 to 5 decades great up so when the next continuation point is that as this ci ml boom started and robotic ci ml everything got merged and we started to get huge amount of applications which are now flowing uh, most of the things actually is initiated from west and then also from these things are also coming now but what about the significant impact how we can have in the indian context because that's the place we are and we also need to see that how we can utilize that stuff very nice question you say that recently ministry of uh, education floated three verticals for ai application smart cities agriculture and healthcare i think that ai will play a big role in indian context e governments uh, e governance means transparent governance that means people should have trust in the process ai will play a big role because it can bring in transparency ai will have certain roles that we are not thinking but in that direction we must work first is india being a culturally very diverse there are many languages so many states with their own equations within dynamics within and hence personalized learning because every culture has different group of kids they need a different kind of personalized learning and training where we can make a big impact personalized healthcare that also we have not thought about nor we i don't know whether we are really working whether there are how many startups are there so this is something that we need to look at personalized training in education personalized health healthcare uh, ai will impact means they will not overtake the experts they will assist a teacher can be assisted by a ai assistant for personalized training similarly a doctor can be assisted by a personalized healthcare and along the with that as these verticals i told you lot of application in agriculture how we benefit the farmers how we benefit caregivers how we uh, mental health is another aspect of uh, ai uh, so lot of impact we can do but there are many challenges uh, challenges are because unfortunately we are not india centric hmm. whatever america does or europe does we try to mimic it and we have not still entered into that psyche where our country matters first our people matters first this this very idea is still not within we are still looking at after getting a degree from indian universities like iits how we put our step in foreign land so these are some of the bottlenecks that we have to really cross before we can make ai useful in the indian context so very well said so this as you have said that india centric start of something that you have talked about i also want to say that as we all see that all the focus of this ai ml started from the different algorithms and now it got focused on to becoming too much data centric and so so have we started to have areas like the you know data science and all 
so there also we have seen that most of the things are coming from west and so what what are take, takes about this so this is where iit mandi has to take a role i have been telling since last 3 years iit mandi must create database we don't have indic database for example the image net started with 10 million faces where are indians there we had a country of 1.4 billion population and we don't have our bharat image net why can't we do it we have more than 25 official languages where we have database for indian languages and for that matter where is, where are the databases for uh, uh, the indian healthcare applications agriculture applications this is where we can make a revolution and i you see that we have more than 30 faculty members working uh, at iit mandi and if center for ai and robotics takes certain initiative school of computing and electrical engineering they takes up certain initiative the school of mathematics where we have uh, uh, the btech program called uh, mathematics and computing there also faculty member can take uh, certain uh, initiative to collect our own database i think if we set the standard of having indian database and people from all over the universities across india if they use our database obviously iit mandi is making an impact of course you know we can always work on algorithm architecture that's obvious but without data because the ai has become mostly data centric uh, discipline now so without data what ai can do i think uh, uh, iit mandi should take a lead in 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 creating indian databases and uh, that will really will have a great impact uh, as far as ai tools development in the india centric approach good answer sir so with this uh, i also so i just wanted to mention that most of the students who are now attending they are actually coming from deep learning classes and other related ai you know courses that we are running and uh, we are very happy to tell everyone that uh, we have spent more than 5 to 6 crores so has to get the dgx as well as the iml lab and 350 plus students are doing this deep learning course and most of them are coming and attending this session so my question is that given a vast experience that you have of you know 1988 and then 90 when you started your phd so what what would uh, i advise that you wanted to give to this young upcoming bright researchers because in this era of ai ml deep learning things are happening very fast to cut up the pace they have to be fast and all ai tools are there they are helping them to write to read so all these scenarios are being changed from the traditional learning strategy so that's the thing that i wanted to know from you that how these things can actually so oh, advice to these new upcoming brains you say people are interested in ai mostly because it can give them jobs sure. yes we have to understand the ground reality but what i would like to tell you that our students they don't see the bigger picture when we started working on ai you know we didn't want to work under somebody is directing that you have to think in this direction and hence we have to work no education is a democratization process everybody's creativity must play a vital role because ultimately i have to be satisfied with my own little contribution to a bigger field but if that is hijacked by few business conglomerate and they start directing what you have to do 
then this field will have its natural death. In education, knowledge must be uncontaminated, it should be unbiased, and they must come out of our natural inquisitive and contemplative process. And hence, I would request all those who are here hearing that keep your natural, technical, and academic creativity always in the forefront. They should direct you what you should do and what you should not do. This is very important. Simultaneously, I need to tell you that there are so many tools have come, whether it is chat GPT, you know, uh, the video translation tools, query tools, you know, hundreds of AI tools are on the market now. At best, they can help you, assist you, but they, they cannot make you what you would like to become. <coughs> AI is always will remain subservient to human intellectual potential. So what I would request all of you, always be expert in a domain. Okay, AI is a tool. Are you an expert in agriculture? Are you an expert in healthcare? Are you an expert in environment? Are you an expert in bridge or structural uh, engineering? Are you an expert in mathematics? That really matters. And AI as a tool, just like mathematics as a tool, helps us to develop technology. Similarly, AI as a tool can help you. But you must be, you must ensure that you are an expert in a specific area. That is of your interest. If you ensure that, then AI is an added advantage. But if you are not an expert and you are simply depending on AI, you know, AI is simply taking data from so many ways. So you may be fooled by AI in terms of wrong knowledge, bad ethics, and uh, inaccurate uh, theories or so many things. There are problems because AI is collecting data that are there in so many uh, sources. And authenticity of those data, nobody can actually verify. So this is very important for you. Thank you, sir. So, so with this, uh, I just wanted to add that last at least 10 years back, uh, me and my wife, we both were attending your lecture on restricted Boltzmann machine at Ari Kanpur. And uh, we got enlightening things over there. And uh, even today, I can see that students must have got new ideas and new perspective to see this new upcoming emerging in a scenario. Because whenever a scenario came, which is uncertainty is there, new things are happening at such a rapid pace. Most of the time, we need to understand that what stage or what what's the stance that one should have to take to overcome and understand and utilize these upcoming resources so thank you very much and i would like to thank the uh, director sir for this enlightening interview i am 100 percent sure that all of our students must have got certain useful insights and new perspective to see this upcoming big book thank you <laughs>